I'm Steel Manor. I'm Shane Paul Gibson. We're going to bring you a sermon here today called The Powers That Be. This is very controversial. Most every church in America don't know how to talk about this chapter. It's Romans chapter 13 where a lot of the material comes from. But we didn't just stop at Romans chapter 13. We cover all of what God says about it. Now, what it is, they were under the captivity by Rome at the time. The book of Romans was written to the Romans, the Christians at Rome, the church at Rome. They were under captivity by Rome, by the direct will of God. The Jews had countless, countless, countless times gone into captivity that God ordered because they were a stiff-necked, unrepenting people. So the, keep in mind, things different are never the same. So if you want to start taking Romans chapter 13 and putting it on America that we should obey the laws of an evil government, then you're out to lunch. You're, you're as cuckoo. you got bats in the belfry, okay? Thanks, Peter Ruckman, for that statement. But we're going to tell you about the powers that be and what to obey and what not to obey. Now, if they would have disobeyed Roman rule back in that day, it would have been death instantly. We would have never got a lot of this word that we've had. They knew what they had to do. They knew they had to be obedient and subjected to the powers that were over them. The instant death. And uh, here to tell you a little bit more about it is uh, my brothers in the Lord. And uh, carry away, boys. Well, in Acts 5.29, the word says, uh, Then Peter... And the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Then we go over here to Matthew chapter 22, verse 17 through 22. This is where everybody goes. They say, immediately when you say something about the government, Well, render under Caesar that which is Caesar. That's all they say. They don't finish the verse. Let's hear what it really says. Matthew chapter 22, verses 17 through 22. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Shew me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's. And unto God, the things that are God's. That means if it's, if it's Caesar's country, render it unto him. If it's God's country, founded on God, render it unto God. And America is founded on the principles found in this holy Bible, the King James Bible. Don't be fooled about it. This is a Christian nation, still. No, no matter what our president says. Amen. And the Romans uh, chapter that Jerry was talking about at the beginning is Romans 13. Verses 3 through 7, and the Bible reads, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Therefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For, for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Pretty much sums it up right there. If you've noticed, everybody leaves out the word good. Ministers of good or ministers of evil. There's two spoken of there. Things different are never the same. If they're not worthy of honor, don't give them honor. Amen. If they're a good ruler, then, yeah, you're to be subject to them. If they're an evil ruler, no, you're not. 
Now let me tell you a few people that Jesus never broke one of God's laws. He was God. He knew that. Daniel. Daniel in the lion's den. Why do you think he's in the lion's den? For obeying the, the laws, the powers that be over him? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Did they obey? No, they refused to obey. King David. Every prophet in the New Testament, every prophet in the Old Testament, every disciple, everybody broke man's laws that were evil and obeyed man's laws that were good. In America, we have some laws that are good. They're the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Okay, any law that is a godly law, yes, obey. But anything that is evil, you do not obey, period. Now, if you fail to resist evil government, you will be taken over by evil government, and never has God ever told you to obey evil government. Well, what's going to happen when the tribulation rolls around and the Antichrist is in power? Will you obey the powers that are over you and be subject to the powers that be? Will you take the mark and worship the beast because that's what everybody says to do and that's the law of the land? Will you obey it then? Pray for a discerning spirit to know which to obey and which not. God's word always supersedes man's law every time. The word says uh, to uh, shun the very appearance of evil in 1 Thessalonians, to shun it. I shun it. Every time I see one of them evil guys on TV, I turn the thing off. In fact, I only turn on the glass toilet enough to keep a, keep a little bit of an account on the evil that's about me. But I can't stand it. Now, uh, they're... Uh, my brother here is fixing to tell you a little bit about who we are, why we are, and what we believe, and why we believe it. Uh, the powers that be, are you serving the right powers? Will you obey man's laws over God's laws? Who do you fear, man or God? Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. There's your answer to your question. Amen, brothers. And that's the whole reason we wanted to form the CSA. Three parts, defending faith, family, and freedom. We will stand on our rights and our word of God. King James Bible. It is a King James Bible. There's nobody out there that goes along hardly with what we believe. There's very few. We'll find them, and they can be with us. But we will follow God, we will not follow man. We fear God, not man. Well, starting this thing off was the book of Romans and about our government. And also in the book of Romans it says, For all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And thou uh, confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Don't delay, because the time is short. And if you make the mistake of not accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, you don't stand a chance against the powers that be. For we wage war against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's higher than Washington, D.C. We're talking about in the heavens. We're talking about Satan. We're talking about everything he passes down. So uh, take a listen to this sermon Remember, we are the CSA, we are the chosen soldiers of the Almighty, and His will will we do.